It's more than just a story. It's an immersion into the greatness of the past where each stone tells its own story. Are you ready to discover the most exciting and interesting ruins of Rome? Let's go. Aqua Marcia is one of the seven aqueducts of Rome, an impressive structure built between 44 and 42 BC. It was an impressive structure, but it could not withstand the graceful aging. An important part of it was destroyed during the construction of the Felice Aqueduct. The famous Arch of Constantine, always present on tourist lists, was built by order of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great in 315 AD. The arch was erected in honor of Constantine's victory after the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, which took place in 312 AD. It is very easy to find because it is located next to the even more famous Colosseum. Another beautiful Roman arch that has survived the battle with time and nature is the Arch of Septimius Severus, which can be admired in the Roman form. The arch was built in 203 AD and marks the victory of Roman Emperor Septimius Severus over the Parthian Empire in a battle that took place between 194 and 199 AD. This arch is also close to the Colosseum and the Roman Forum, and any tourist interested in the history of the Roman Empire can admire it for free. The Arch of Titus was built on the initiative of the Roman Emperor Domitian, who wanted to perpetuate the victory of his elder brother, Emperor Titus. The arch was opened shortly after Titus' death in 81 AD and is decorated with interesting images of the trophies of the Jerusalem Temple. This is the name of a fascinating archaeological site in Rome, where there are four impressive temples named with letters from HD. These temples were discovered in the 1920s in the Largo di Torre Argentina Square and have since become an interesting tourist attraction. Each temple consists of beautiful columns and walls. The oldest temple is Temple C, which dates back to the 3rd century, while Temple A was built around the same period. Temples B and D date back to the 2nd century BC. There is also a cat shelter in Argentina's Sacred de Largo district. Although, as you have already seen, there are three more arches in Rome, this arch differs from the others and is unique in that it has four faces, a design known as quadrifrons. The Janus arch dates back to the 4th century AD and was built of brick and marble. It is believed that it was dedicated to the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, and therefore it is also called the Arch of Constantini. This arch is also located in close proximity to the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. The Atrium of Vesta, which means the House of the Vestals, may be located in the Roman Forum. It was a palace with 50 rooms where the priestesses and the goddess of the hearth Vesta, known as the Other Maidens, lived. However, little has been preserved from this palace. The only thing that can be admired today are several statues displayed in the courtyard, where the remains of the walls are still preserved. The octagon of the village, or the octagonal hall, is part of the famous Diocletian bathhouse, which will help you imagine the immensity and splendor of this bath complex. This dome structure has remained untouched for centuries, and today it is used as an exhibition site for exhibitions held by the National Roman Museum. It is believed that this building dates back to 179 BC, but it has been rebuilt many times over the centuries. It was a place where merchants from ancient Rome met, and today it is one of the attractions of the Roman Forum. The basilica was burned to the ground in the 5th century, but it was restored, and today visitors can see several remnants of columns and its pavement. This basilica was actually a civilian courthouse, as well as home to several shops. It was founded by Julius Caesar in 54 BC, but burned down shortly after its inauguration. Augustus rebuilt it in 12 BC, but a series of fires in rebuilding continued for a long time. This basilica is located in the Roman Forum. You will notice this basilica shortly after arriving at the Roman Forum because it is the largest structure on the site, and it still has a roof and three impressive arches and vaults. The construction of this building began in 308, when Roman Emperor Maxentius ruled Rome and was completed in 312 to 313 AD during the reign of Constantine the Great. The basilica became a meeting place for the Judicial or Administrative Council. The Baths of Caracalla are a well-known landmark of Rome, a place that will enchant all travelers who want to learn all about the secrets of ancient Rome. This bath complex is one of the best preserved ancient monuments in the city and impresses visitors with its red brick buildings and numerous preserved ruins. The construction of this complex began in 206 AD under the leadership of Roman Emperor Septimius Severus, but was completed only 10 years later, when his son Caracalla became ruler of Rome. The baths had an impressive number of rooms that could accommodate thousands of people. The complex also had shops, galleries, libraries, and other leisure facilities. 
The original walls of the Caracalla bathhouse have been preserved to this day, and you can also admire the impressive black and white mosaics that decorated the floors. Visitors have the opportunity to visit the underground tunnels and corridors of this complex and see where workers used to spend their days preserving the baths as well as the Temple of Mithras. Another famous bath complex in Rome was built between 298 and 306 AD in honor of the Roman Emperor Diocletian. Diocletian's baths were built in the typical style of Roman times, frigidarium, tepidarium, and calvarium, large bathing chambers, and gyms. However, what distinguishes these baths from any other Roman baths is the impressive size of the complex, which could accommodate up to 3,000 people at a time. Many elements of the bathhouse have been preserved to our time, so you will not be bored during your visit. A visit to Autagon Village will help you get an idea of the grandeur of this complex. Complete your impressions with a visit to the Romano Tom Diocletiano National Museum. Many of us know about the Castle of San Angelo in connection with the popes who hid here when their lives were in danger, which happened quite often. Nevertheless, the Castle of San Angelo was built as a mausoleum for the Roman Emperor Hadrian. It was built between about 123 and 139 AD and looked more like a fortress than a burial place. Roman Emperor Flavius Augustus Honorius decided to incorporate the castle into the Roman walls of Aurelian, and this process led to the disappearance of most of the contents of the mausoleum. In the Middle Ages, it became a citadel and eventually a prison. The castle is connected to the Vatican Palace by an underground tunnel, which is sometimes open to the public. Rome is full of catacombs, of which only five are usually open to the public. The catacombs of San Calisto are some of them. These catacombs date back to about 150 and were an underground burial place for Christians. They have five floors where 500,000 bodies have found their eternal rest. Some famous personalities are buried here, including several popes, but this is not the burial place of Pope St. Calixtus. The Circus Maximus in Rome is a structure to which all ancient Roman circuses in the world are compared. It was the largest sports stadium in ancient Rome, mainly used as an arena for chariot racing. At one point, after several renovations, the total capacity of the circus was 250,000 seats. Although no one can say when the first version of this arena was built, historians are sure that the Circus Maximus was used in the 4th century BC, so it is by far the oldest arena in Rome. Although it is much smaller than the Bolshoi Circus and holds only 10,000 spectators, the Circus of Maxentius has been preserved much better. It is located on Via Appia and was built by order of Emperor Maxentius, who ruled Rome between 306 and 312 AD. Many elements of the circus have survived to this day, as well as its entrance towers and spinach, the central dividing line, so it is definitely worth a visit. As excavations at this site continue, we expect that we will have the opportunity to admire even more exciting elements of this circus. The construction of the Claudio Aqueduct began in 38, during the reign of Emperor Caligula, but was completed by the Roman Emperor Claudius in 52 AD. Part of this aqueduct can still be seen today if you visit the Appia Antica Regional Park. Many pages have been written about the Colosseum, and there are not many travelers who would not have heard about this fabulous Roman structure which seems to have discovered the secret of eternal youth. The Colosseum in Rome is a huge amphitheater that could accommodate up to 55,000 people, which was the scene of many gladiatorial fights and animal fights. Its construction began in 70 AD, but the arena was opened only 10 years later. The first competition was quite bloody, more than 5,000 wild animals were killed during the fighting, and many gladiators found their end. It seems that several animal species, such as the average Easter lion and the North African elephant, have become extinct due to these fights. The Colosseum illustrates all three ancient architectural styles, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Don't stand in line, get out of the queue. Come here with the VIP visitors. The Curia Julia was the Senate building of ancient Rome, an imposing structure built during the reign of Julius Caesar. It was erected in the very center of the city and today stands untouched thanks to the conversion into the Church of St. Anthony in 623 AD by order of Pope Honorius I. Domus Augustana is a magnificent palace built by the Roman Emperor Domitian on the Palatine Hill. It was used as the residence of the Roman emperors and was one of the most incredible structures in Rome. Today, visitors can visit the beautiful courtyard where the remains of the palace walls and a fountain remind of the existence of a fabulous palace. The Flavian Palace, also located on the Palatine Hill, was the public palace of the Roman emperors, a venue for official events. It was built by Emperor Domitian in the 1st century AD. 
The most notable remains of the palace are several fountains that can be found in the courtyard. It was the first of the imperial forums that were built in Rome to relieve the overcrowded Roman Forum. Its construction began in 54 BC on the orders of Julius Caesar and was completed in 46 BC, when Julius Caesar won the battle against his rival Pompey the Great. That is why Caesar's Forum is located next to the Temple of Venus, the Ancestress, a monument built in honor of his victory. Visitors can still admire the columns and the platform of the temple. However, you should know that they are not part of the original temple, which burned down in 80 AD, but a restored version completed under the leadership of the Roman Emperor Trajan. This form was built between 107 and 112 AD under the leadership of the Roman Emperor Trajan, after the emperor had won several military campaigns, especially the conquest of Dacia. There were several public buildings and two libraries on this site, which used to serve as a curb for the most important building of the form, the legendary Trajan's Column. This 98-foot-high column is incredibly well-preserved and includes wonderful friezes illustrating scenes from the Dacian Wars. During your visit here, you will also notice the remains of the Basilica of Ulpius, the administrative center of Rome, and the beautiful Trajan's Market, which some believe was a shopping center. But it seems that it actually served an administrative role. Villa Adriana, covering an area of about 250 acres, is a fabulous complex that is considered the best-preserved Roman villa in the world. It has about 30 buildings and many interesting monuments, libraries, a colonnaded swimming pool, and a marine theater. This villa dates back to the 2nd century and surprises guests not only with its well-preserved ruins, but also with a small island. The house is also the personal home of the emperor, which was Hadrian's secret hideout. Littus Magnus was the largest and most famous gladiator school in Rome and can be found in the immediate vicinity of the Colosseum. It was built between 81 and 96 AD by order of Emperor Domitian and rebuilt between 98 and 117 AD during the reign of Emperor Trajan. The ruins that can be admired today date back to the time of Trajan. Visitors can admire the basics of the spectator stands, the arena and the gladiator barracks, the fountains from which the gladiators drank water during training, as well as their cameras. Via San Giovanni, the Roman road connecting the Colosseum with the Basilica of San Clemente, offers the best view of Lutus the Great. This Roman prison was used from the 7th century BC when it was built until the 4th century AD. The ruins of the Mamertino prison are located under the church of San Giuseppe dei Falignami, next to the Roman Forum. It can be reached by a spiral staircase. Your efforts will be rewarded with the opportunity to look into the final resting place of many criminals of ancient Rome. This is the grave of the first emperor of Rome. Everyone knows who Augustus is. Augustus ruled between 63 BC and 14 AD and was the great nephew of Julius Caesar. The mausoleum was built around 28 BC and became the burial place not only of Augustus, but also of his wife Livia and other Roman emperors and public figures. Today, little remains of its former greatness and the mausoleum is closed to the public. However, you can admire the two obelisks in Piazza del Quirinale and Piazza Esquilino. This very well-preserved tomb is located on Via Appia, and it is believed that it was built at the end of the 1st century AD. According to the inscriptions on the mausoleum, Cecilia Metella was a member of a very important Roman family, Quintus Cecilius Metellus Creticus. His father was a senior magistrate who played an important role in the conquest of the island of Crete. Cecilia Metella's husband was Marcus Licinius Crassus the Younger, also an important political figure during the reign of Julius Caesar. The Palatine Hill is not only one of the seven hills of Rome, but also the birthplace of Rome itself. Legend has it that Romulus and Remus were abducted by a she-wolf right here on this hill, and this became the foundation of their village. We don't know about the she-wolf, but archaeologists have actually proved that this hill was the place where the first Roman huts were built. This hill has become one of the most important in Rome and is very rich in meanings. It was here that Augustus was born in 63 BC, and there are also such impressive ancient sites as the House of Augustus, the Palace of Septimius Severus, the House of Augustus, and the House of Livia. Visitors usually stop to admire the partially preserved stadium, which was once part of the Domus Augustana, the palace where Roman emperors lived. The stadium was built by order of Emperor Domitian, but no one knows exactly what its purpose was. It is believed that it was either a private garden or a riding arena. The Roman Pantheon is as famous as the Colosseum, and it certainly deserves its reputation. It is one of the best-preserved ancient structures in Rome and a place that enchants every tourist visiting Rome. 
It was originally built in 25 BC by Marcus Agrippa as a temple dedicated to the most important gods of Rome, but in 80 AD a fire burned it to the ground. However, the Pantheon was rebuilt in 125 AD when Emperor Hadrian ruled Rome and this building can still be admired today. The highlight of this building is its original domed roof, which has an oculus round hole. This dome was considered the largest in the world until the 15th century. In 609, the Pantheon became a church, and in the Middle Ages it became the tomb of important Italian figures. Also known as the Emilia Bridge, the Ponte Rado is the oldest stone bridge in Rome, a structure that dates back to the 2nd century BC. The Ponte Rado was built to replace a wooden bridge, the only part that has survived the centuries is the arch, but it's still worthy of a few minutes of your time. Although San Clemente is a 12th century basilica, the highlight of this place is actually the 4th century church and the Temple of Mitre, which are located under the foundation of this basilica. To see these ruins, visitors must go down under the basilica. They will have the opportunity to admire one of the rooms of the temple, some well-preserved frescoes and the ruins of several Roman houses. Another well-preserved Roman structure, this temple dates back to 141 and was built on the initiative of Roman Emperor Antoninus Pius in honor of his wife Faustina, who was deified after her death. Twenty years later, the emperor also died and was also deified, so that the temple that was once dedicated to Faustina now became the temple of Antoninus and Faustinus. Between 600 and 800 AD, the temple became part of the Church of San Lorenzo in Miranda, and that is why it has managed to survive to this day. This temple was built in honor of Julius Caesar, who was assassinated on March 15, 44 BC, and after his death he was deified. It is located in the Roman Forum and was erected on the site of Caesar's cremation. The temple was completed in 29 BC. The Temple of Venus in Rome is located in the eastern part of the Roman Forum in close proximity to the Colosseum. It dates back to 135 AD, and it is believed that the Roman emperor of those times Hadrian was directly involved in the design of the temple. Previously, the temple had two main rooms and it was an impressive structure. These two temples are among the best preserved in Rome. One of them is dedicated to Hercules the Conqueror and the other is known as the Temple of Cortuna. Both temples date back to the 2nd century BC and were united into churches in the Middle Ages, hence their current state. The Forum Buarium was part of the Roman cattle market, but eventually became a commercial center. The Temple of Vesta was dedicated to the goddess of the hearth Vesta and was used to house the eternal flame, which was a symbol of the eternal nature of Rome. If the flames had to be extinguished, it seemed that Rome was doomed. The temple burned several times, but each time it was rebuilt. All that remains of it today are three standing columns and part of the fourth. The Temple of Vesta is located in the southeastern part of the Roman Forum. The ruins of the Regia are located in the Roman Forum and were built to house the first kings of ancient Rome. Later, the building became the residence of the Grand Pontiff, a title that at one point was also attributed to Julius Caesar. Apart from the basement floors, there is nothing special left of Reggie, but if you are interested in seeing the remains, then this place is located near the Temple of Antoninus and Faustina. Located on Via Appia, this villa is one of the most luxurious residences in Rome. In 151 AD, it belonged to the wealthy Quintilian brothers and had their own thermal baths. These brothers enjoyed the favor of Marcus Aurelius, but the Roman emperor Commodus did not share the same opinion as Marcus Aurelius. During his reign, the brothers were executed, and their luxurious villa became the property of the emperor. The villa is relatively well-preserved and you can still distinguish its thermal baths, 